Good evening, everyone. Happy Halloween. Happy Hunter's Moon. Happy Blue Moon. Happy Saturday. And uh, welcome. My name is El Brodsky. I'm the founder of Yoga Buzz. And I want to welcome you here to our virtual yoga under the stars practice this evening. As you can see, I've got the universe draped behind me here. Um, and I'm also joined by my friend, Will Snyder of the uh, James S. McDonald Planetarium at the St. Louis Science Center. Hi, Will. Hey, El. Thanks for having me this evening. Absolutely. Um, so you may be familiar, you the the you watching this here wherever you are uh, with our yoga under the stars that we do at the St. Louis Science Center at the James S. McDonald Planetarium. It's such a beautiful experience. I'd love to tell you all about what we're not doing right now. <laughs> um, but being able to do yoga in the dark under just this vast field of stars is really beautiful um, and super magical. And so um, tonight I encourage you to set the mood for yourself. If you can turn off lights in the, the room that you're in, maybe light some candles or, or whatever you can do to really just make it um, feel spooky and special and sacred as well. Um, and then, Will, before I turn it over to you, just a quick word about Yoga Buzz. We're a nonprofit. Our mission is to share the practice of yoga across the St. Louis area in ways that are accessible, trauma-informed, and, uh, and center social justice at the root of all that we do. Um, so we're offering this practice this evening at no cost. Uh, if you're able to make a donation or a contribution, uh, we certainly would appreciate it. You can also make a donation to the St. Louis Science Center to help keep their mission going strong. Uh, and so, Will, I'll turn it over to you. We're going to start with a star show tonight. All right. Thank you, Elle. And thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening, for taking a little bit of a time out of our spooky Halloween to take a moat, Brad. We'll take a break, relax together. And, well, as Elle mentioned, it's not going to be the same as being underneath our beautiful canopy of stars. We can still spend a little time here at the start of our practice to become acquainted with well, what's going on in the real sky right now here on Halloween. So join me as we take a step into our virtual planetarium. We use a free software called Stellarium that you can download and follow along with at home. But really all it is is a recreation of our nighttime sky. So we're creating what you'd see tonight right around 830, perhaps when you're finishing up with our practice. And to begin our show, we're looking east, where undoubtedly the star of Halloween this year is our beautiful full moon. You cannot miss it. It is brilliant, bright, and beautiful, rising in the east right now, and it will be with us all throughout the evening. It's at least my opinion that the moon is beautiful on any night, but on a full moon, we get it to enjoy its beauty all throughout the night. If you are going out, doing anything for Halloween, you will have a nice, clear, moonlit evening to enjoy. But you might also be hearing a few words being thrown around with the moon right now, too. Because not only do we have a full moon tonight, we also have a blue moon. So what does that mean and what's going on? Well, in general, the phases of the moon, they force us to learn growing up in school. All those weird words like waxing crescent and waning gibbous, but the full one is the easy one to remember. That's what we've got tonight, where the side facing us is completely lit. But blue moon has to do with, well, the moon and its orbit around the Earth. It takes the moon roughly 29 and a half days to orbit around our planet in the solar system. And it's that number, 29 and a half days, that is really important to what's going on. It's no coincidence that 29 and a half days is really close to 30 or 31, the number of days in a typical month, and on average, we will have one full moon each month. But once in a blue moon, as they say, you will have two full moons in a calendar month. October this year is that exact situation. On October 1st, we got to enjoy our harvest moon, versus tonight on Halloween, the 31st of October, we have a blue moon. Now, that doesn't mean the moon will be blue, it's just People get into arguments exactly where the phrase comes from, but it's really just the name we give to the coincidence of having two moons or full moons in the same calendar month, like we're enjoying right now. Now, once in a blue moon does imply sort of a rare occasion, and at least on Halloween. The last time we had a full moon, which was a blue moon, was in 2001, and every 19 years you can enjoy a full blue moon like we have this year. But for tonight, Keep in mind that that moon will be visible in the eastern sky, but honestly, probably won't be the spookiest thing you'll see tonight. So perhaps we've got the whole universe at our disposal. We can try to look around the sky and see if we can find something uh, a little bit more spooky for us this Halloween. 
After looking at the moon, I think the next thing that might capture your attention this evening is looking a little bit towards the southeast. There is a blazingly bright beacon in the eastern sky. It shines with a reddish orange light, and it's a pretty good hint that it is our red planet of Mars. Mars has been in the news a lot here in October because it's bright. Every 26 and a half months, we catch up with Mars and the solar system, passing it by in what's called opposition, and that happened earlier this month. Whenever we're at our closest to Mars, it appears nice and bright in the sky like it does this evening, and let's face it, it's a world that certainly has some spooky connotations to it. So many sci-fi movies are out there talking about Martians invading from Mars, and perhaps some of you might even enjoy a movie like that tonight, but... Honestly, I think if we look around the sky, we can do a little bit better when it comes to maybe some creepy sights that are out there. Instead, I hope you enjoy a beautiful sight of Mars, remembering that you will see it in the east along with the moon later on this evening. And once again, you really can't miss it. It is the second brightest thing after the sun sets tonight, and you'll be able to find it right next to the moon. But to look our way around this area of the sky a little bit more, there are a few constellations that might be able to guide us. If we turn our attention back to the moon here, right above the moon is a little arcing shaped group of stars, and that happens to be one of our zodiac constellations, a constellation known as Aries the Ram, which the moon is passing through tonight, and above it, Mars is passing through the constellation of Pisces, the two fish. Certainly, a ram and two fish, not very scary yet, but that's not true of all our constellations. Because instead, if we look a little bit below Mars and the moon this evening, there aren't lots of bright stars here. But this faint collection of stars together is arguably one of our scarier constellations, the sea monster named Cetus. Together, Cetus, in some stories and mythology, might be just a docile, peaceful whale. But in some stories, like one we can tell this evening, well, it was a fearsome beast. A sea monster sent by Poseidon to punish the rulers of Ethiopia, Cassiopeia, and Cepheus for their vanity. He's imagined in the stars with a huge tail that could create tidal waves flooding the ocean. He has those talons that would allow him to crawl up along the beaches and terrorize the citizens. But really, there are some creepy things about this constellation, even beyond just the pattern of stars and the story that go along with it. Instead, constellations like these are really big puzzle pieces. They split the sky up, and there are many objects hidden inside these pieces, like Cetus in the sky, that you might not notice with your eyes at first. For instance, one object we can look for this evening has a rather spooky nickname called the Skull Nebula. It's hidden near the tail of Cetus the whale, just below the red planet of Mars, and if we zoom our way on in, it's a nebula a cloud of dust and gas in the Milky Way that's imagined as remotely looking like a spooky skull in our sky. Now, much like the constellations, I think it takes a little bit of imagination to think that this looks any what spooky in the sky at night. And I know most of us probably will drag a telescope out later on this evening, so I can show you something a little on the worrisome side that you can see with just the unaided eye tonight, too. To find it though, I'm gonna zoom us out here a little bit, zooming away from that nebula in the tail of Cetus the whale. And remember that this character was sent by Poseidon in Greek mythology, also known as Neptune in Roman tales from long ago, to punish a few characters and constellations in our sky. One that if we zoom on out, we actually find directly above them. Above Mars tonight, four stars shine in a big square, often called the Great Square of Autumn, but form the main body of the constellation Pegasus, the flying horse. Pegasus was the famous royal steed to a certain royal family we find in the sky this evening, and it's to the left of Pegasus, this V-shaped group of stars, is the mighty princess known as Andromeda in our nighttime sky. Above her, the W or M-shaped group of stars you will notice here is the famous queen, Cassiopeia, her mother sitting upon her throne, and next to her, we're even able to find her famous husband of Cepheus, the king. Together, Cepheus, Cassiopeia, and Andromeda ruled over the ancient land of Ethiopia, and in many of the tales of mythology, 
are remembered for their vanity. In fact, even in our planetarium software, Cassiopeia is imagined as holding a mirror, admiring her own good looks in the sky. But there's one important character missing from this story, and it's the hero of the tale of Andromeda in the sky, her famous husband, the hero named Perseus. Perseus is in this same grouping of constellations in the east where we find the moon and Mars this evening, and there's one particular star that I would encourage you to look at. It's a star named Algol, already maybe starting to sound a little bit spooky, but in its native language of Arabic, it translates meaning the demon's head, which pictured in our planetarium software, we see the hero Perseus holding the severed head of Medusa, a mythological character whose story is honestly quite tragic, but has some interesting science going on in the sky too. That name, the demon star, or the demon head, implies all sorts of negative connotations, and it's this star that likely would have been viewed in many ways as an evil object in the sky to ancient stargazers. It's because even in modern times, this star does something unusual. Like clockwork, just shy of every three days, the star Algo will dim unexpectedly getting roughly three times dimmer than it is typically before brightening once again. To ancient cultures that observed the stars, any unexpected changes were very worrisome to them. The stars and constellations were their constant companion. They counted on them always looking the same. And anything out of the ordinary, well, it caused a lot of concern. Comets in ancient cultures are a great example. They would appear seemingly at random in our sky and were often seen as evil omens. The strange dimming of Algo was likely viewed in the same way, being associated with something evil or spooky or a demon, in this case, in the constellation of Perseus. But it's in modern time we know the scientific reason why. This star dims, seemingly unexpected, but like clockwork. And it's because what we see as one star with our eyes is actually two that orbit around one another just like our Earth orbits around the sun. We call this a binary star when two stars orbit around one another, and this is a specific example called a eclipsing binary. As the two stars orbit around one another, like we see here, it turns out that one will pass in front of the other on a regular interval, blocking a fraction of their light. It's when this happens that Algol dims mysteriously in brightness before brightening once again, and it's to our eyes that it just appears as one point of light because we're so far away from it. So in reality, maybe Algo isn't all that spooky after all, but it is certainly an interesting star and one of the many beautiful sights you can see overhead. To find it, remember that it is hiding in our constellation of Perseus in the nighttime sky. Look for Port Perseus, one of those heroes of Greek mythology, along with his two in-laws of Cassiopeia and Cepheus, high in the northeastern sky. They'll be accompanied by Andromeda, Pegasus, and that whole fleet of characters. But even if you forget all of this, just make sure that you take a look at the moon. The moon will be the showstopper. It and Mars will shine nice and brilliant and bright after our practice this evening. And I hope you get a chance to enjoy it. Of course, though, the moon and really everything we've talked about today is just a tiny fraction of everything that's going on out there in the sky. And in the little bit of time we have together tonight, we can barely scratch the surface of everything that's out there, let alone what you can see this evening. So if we've piqued your curiosity, I hope you'll go out tonight, look up, and you never know what you might find. If nothing else, at least take a moment to relax underneath the stars, and I hope you have a great practice tonight. So it's at this point that we come to the end of our star show here with you this evening, and I hope you have a great practice this evening. Thanks for having us, and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you so much, Will. All right, so I uh, put on this jacket because it's kind of chilly out here in outer space where I am coming at you to teach class this evening, but I, I've kind of kind of heated up. Mm. Just very quickly. Whoa. Whoa, what is this? What what is this? Oh, it's oh, it's my jacket stuck to duct tape. Aha. 
So one of the things that we talk about when we're uh, at the planetarium is how we are made of stardust. We are made of the stuff of stars. And that's not a woo-woo thing. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a scientific fact, right? We are made up of carbon, which is the same thing that the stars are made up of. So my Halloween costume tonight is to be the universe embodied within my, my humble self. So let's take a comfortable seat wherever uh, wherever you are, if you're on your mat or a spot on the floor in your home. And take a moment or two here to perhaps look around your space to begin. Just notice where you are in space. And then if you'd like, perhaps close your eyes, or start to move your gaze inward. So this practice that we'll enjoy together tonight will be about 45 minutes long. Just an opportunity to connect with our breath, connect with one another, even in this virtual format to celebrate this, this opportunity to, to be creative, this opportunity to express ourselves. And recognizing that the costumes that we don on Halloween are really just exaggerated versions of costumes that we don every day, the way that we show up in the world. Because again, we're we're made of stardust, we're made of the same stuff as stars, and yet we move through the world as if we're something unique and disconnected from that. We wear masks and specific clothing and carry ourselves in certain ways to try to fit in when the reality is, is that we're all connected no matter what. Let's take a full deep breath in here. An open mouth exhale. And whether you're at home by yourself or with friends or loved ones, know that we're, we're all connected here together. So take a moment to send gratitude to those who are practicing with you tonight. Gratitude to the ancient lineage that yoga comes from by way of India and gratitude back through all of those who have occupied this land before us. All those who have worked hard to make this land uh, what it is, while recognizing the work that is still yet to be done. Take a full, complete exhale. And inhale, sweep your arms up overhead. Bring the palms together to touch, then exhale, bring your hands to heart center. Inhale, extend your arms up overhead. Exhale, release your arms down by your sides. And again, inhale, reach. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release your arms by your sides. So let's do this one more time. I'll oftentimes cue breath as we move through this practice tonight. It's ultimately up to you to breathe in a way that suits and serves your body and the movements of your body. And take and bring your right fingertips tips off to the side on the ground or a block or anything that's there. Reach your left arm up overhead and tilt to the right. And you can stay here. You can walk your right fingertips out a little further. Take a big inhale here. And exhale, reach your left fingertips forward. Inhale, reach your arm back up. Exhale, reach forward and down. Inhale, reach back up. One more time. This time, release your left arm off to the side. Sweep your right arm up. Lengthen out through the right fingertips and then tilt to the left. And find placement for your left hand here, whether it's close by the body or a little further away. Inhale here. 
Exhale, reach the right fingertips forward and down. And inhale, draw it back. And exhale. Twice more. And release your right hand down by your side. Inhale, sweep both arms high overhead. Exhale, hands to the heart. And from here, shift yourself forward. Let's come to tabletop on hands and knees. So hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Inhale, take the heart forward through the, um, if you're trying to draw it forward through the arms. Exhale, chin to the chest, round through your spine. Inhale, heart forward, shoulders back, belly down. Exhale, chin to the chest, curl in. One more time, inhale. And exhale. Come up to a neutral spine here, long flat back. Take and extend your right arm out to the right. And then exhale, thread the right arm, either coming onto your right forearm or all the way down onto your right shoulder. You can walk your left arm forward towards the front of your mat if that feels interesting. You could also reach your hips back towards your heels rather than keeping them over your knees. Take one more breath here. Then bring your left hand underneath your left shoulder again if it's not elsewhere. Sweep your right arm out to the side, stretch long, and then lower your right hand down to the earth. Sweep your left arm out to the side, then thread the left arm behind the right. Either come onto your left forearm or your left shoulder. Again, you can take and walk your right arm forward if you'd like. You might also take the hips back towards your heels, or you can keep them over your hips. One more breath here. Bring your right hand underneath your right shoulder. Sweep your left arm out wide and take your left hand down to the ground. From here, take and walk your hands back towards your knees. Tuck your toes, lift your knees up off of the ground into a standing forward fold the back of your space. Now from here, you can take and bring your forearms to the top of your thighs to brace, uh, brace yourself there, or you can let your arms hang freely down towards the earth. Bring a bend to your knees. You can sway from side to side. You can even take and walk your feet a little wider. I like to place my feet that distance apart, especially the first time I come into a forward fold in yoga. Just give myself some space. Take one more breath here. From here, walk your hands up to the front of your thighs. Lift your torso up so that your spine is parallel to the ground below. Send out long through the crown of your head. Squeeze your shoulder blades together behind you. Then you press down into your heels and then use that to see if you can elicit a little bit more strength through the legs. Take another inhale here. Exhale, fold forward towards the thighs. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise to standing. Sweep your arms up overhead. Bring the palms together. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, extend your arms high overhead. Exhale, little bend to the knees as you fold forward at your hips. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Again, inhale, rise to standing, sweep your arms high. Exhale, palms touch, thumbs to the center of the chest. Inhale, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale to a halfway lift, shoulder blades hug together. Exhale, fold forward. Once more, inhale, rise to standing. Exhale, hands to the heart, thumbs to the center of the chest. Pause for a moment here. 
Feel the soles of your feet connected into the earth below. As you press down through the soles of your feet, notice that that creates more of a lift through your chest. Just notice what it's like to stand, to be present with your breath. The moon, when it's full, it's full, not from its own light, but from the way that it reflects the light of the sun. It's a beautiful example of a relationship where we get to reflect back to the person that we love, that we care about, the things that we see in them, the brightness that we see in them. Release your arms down by your sides. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead. Exhale, fold forward at your head. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. From here, inhale, rise to standing. Exhale, hands to the heart. Take and step to face the long edge of your mat. Bring your feet out wide. Toes uh, point towards the long edge of your mat. Bring your hands to your hips. Turn your right toes towards the short edge of your mat. Bend your right knee over the ankle. Take your arms out wide, gaze out across your right fingertips or your teeth. So as you gaze out across the right fingertips, remember your left arm behind you and reach out through your left fingertips just as much as you reach out through the right. So you don't have to look at your left hand in order to know it's there, okay? So take your attention equally across both arms and then do the same for both feet. Reach equally down through the soles of both of your feet. Inhale, straighten the front leg, bring your arms up overhead. Exhale, bend the front knee, take your arms out wide. Inhale, press down, lift up. Exhale, settle back in. One more time, inhale, lift. Exhale. Take your right forearm or your right hand or your right forearm to your right thigh. Left arm up to the sky or bicep by the ear. Root down through the sole of your left foot as you extend out through the crown of your head. So think of those two lines moving in opposite directions here. Take another breath here. Inhale, rise up, straighten the front leg. Flip the palm of the right hand up towards the sky, left hand towards the back leg, right arm goes up overhead. Reach out through both legs, a little reverse triangle here. Another inhale. And exhale, bring both hands to your hips. Turn your toes uh, to point towards the long edge of your mat. There's a tear in the space-time continuum back here. Uh, we'll switch sides here now. So point your left toes towards the short edge of your mat. Bend your left knee and send it forward towards over your ankle. Reach your arms out wide, gaze out across your left fingertips. This is warrior two. So oftentimes people equate yoga with being really peaceful, really relaxing, and it certainly can be, but there's a pose, there's warrior poses here. Right? The idea and the philosophy of yoga is not just that we are relaxed and peaceful when we do yoga, but that we take the tools that we learn there and apply it to things that get hard, like, like being here with the front leg bent for a period of time, or difficult conversations with loved ones or reading the comments on the internet, right? You learn how to take deep breaths. Inhale, straighten the front leg, bring the arms overhead. Exhale, bend the knees and the that line. A couple more times here with your breath and let the movement connect with your breath rather than rushing your breath to meet the movement. Let's do one more. Take and bring your left hand or your left forearm to your left thigh. Right hand can go to the hip or to the sky or bicep by the ear. Reach down through the sole of your right foot. And as you press through the right heel, lengthen out through the crown of your head. See if you can line your ears up with your shoulders so your head doesn't tilt forward, so you keep strong through the back. Take another breath here. Use an inhale to rise up, reach with the right hand, straighten the left leg, flip the palm of the left hand to the sky, right hand to the back leg, left arm reaches up. Root down through the sole of your left foot as you extend up through the left fingertips. 
Then bring both hands to your hips. Turn your left toes to point towards the long edge of your mat. Hug your elbows back, lift up through your chest. Big inhale. And exhale, hinge forward at your hips, wide-legged forward. You can take your hands to the legs here or to the ground. Or if you've got a piece of furniture nearby, you can rest your hands there. The ground is far away. The ground is far away from me here. Partially because I'm wrapped in duct tape. <laughs> From here, let's experiment. So shift your weight back towards your heels and notice where the stretch happens in the back of your legs. Now shift your weight forward towards your toes and notice what happens in the stretch of your legs. You can go back and forth between those two here. So it doesn't take a big shift of your weight in the feet to change the, uh, to change the experience of the pose, right? And then see if you can spread your weight equally across the soles of both of your feet. Let's take one more inhale here. Bring your hands up to your hips. Bring the spine parallel to the ground. Squeeze your elbows back towards the sky. Pause here. Take an inhale. Exhale, press into the feet and lift on up to standing. From here, take in. You can wiggle your feet together. You can step them together or you can jump, hop, and bring them together. We'll do a little, little balancing here. So stand down into the soles of your feet. You can take your feet hip bone distance apart, or perhaps a little wider. That might be, feel a little sturdier. Come into the sole of your left foot. Come onto your right tippy toes. So you're welcome to stay here or turn your right knee open out towards the side. Let's start with hands at the hips. So toe could... Uh, Toes can be on the ground, right knee open wide, or you can bring the sole of the foot to the inseam of the left leg at the ankle or the calf, or perhaps up above the knee on the inner thigh. It could go on the inner knee as long as you're feeling sturdy. If you're feeling wobbly, then take your foot off the inside of the knee. Hands can stay at the hips or hands at heart center, or reach your arms up overhead. Something that's helpful here for balance is to focus forward and down. You keep your gaze there or look forward to challenge yourself a bit more or look up towards the sky for a little bit more challenge or try closing your eyes. And it's spooky because you can't see and it'll make you fall over. And then let's release the right foot and switch sides. So hands back to the hips. Come onto the sole of the right foot, left tippy toes, left knee turns out to the side. Find a placement for your left foot that is sustainable, especially to start. You can stay here, bring hands to heart center, or you can reach your arms up overhead. Again, forward and down with the gaze to help establish your balance, and then you might. Challenge yourself by looking forward and up. One more breath. And bring your hands to heart center. Release your left foot down to the ground. Right. Take your hands back to the hips. Uh, let's take a step to the front of your mat. Inhale, reach your arms overhead. Exhale, fold forward at the hips. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. From here, take and stretch your left leg all the way back on your mat. Lower your left knee down to the ground. If you have blocks, you can place them on either side of your front foot. Uh, if you don't have blocks, you can stack anything that could be helpful. Let's take hands to the top of the right thigh to begin here. Press your hips forward and down, lift up through the chest. Back toes can be tucked under or pointed back. That's sort of a personal preference. You're welcome to stay here or take one or both arms up overhead. 
Same thing here with your gaze. You can look forward and down or challenge yourself a bit more by taking your gaze up towards the heavens. Take another inhale here. And exhale, shift your hips over your left knee. Stretch your right leg out long in front of you for a half split, or in my case, a quarter split, or whatever fraction of a split your body comes into. Flex your right toes towards your face. You can take your hands to the top of the right thigh here or again to blocks or to the ground. We'll be here for two more breaths. And then shift your right knee forward over the right ankle. Take your left hand to the ground off to the left side of your mat. Right hand to your hip. Or take your right arm up towards the sky for a twist. So you're turning towards your front bent knee. Stack your right shoulder over the left. Take another big inhale here. And exhale, release your hands. Bring both hands to the inside of your uh, right foot. Walk your right foot off to the right, a foot print distance or two. Take and extend your heart forward. Right knee stacked over your right, uh, stacked over your right ankle. You can keep the back knee lowered or tuck your toes and lift it up. Take one more inhale here. And as you exhale, step, hop, wiggle, shimmy, bring the left foot forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. From here, take and stretch your right leg all the way back on your mat. Place your right knee down to the ground. Take your hands to the top of your left thigh. Lift your torso up. You're welcome to stay here with the hands on the thighs or take your hands up towards the sky. Reach your hips forward and down and then echo in the opposite direction as you reach up through the fingertips. Another inhale here. And exhale, shift your hips over your right knee, stretch your left leg forward. Flex your toes. So toes go towards your face, but press the ball of the foot forward. You can stay upright here. You can take your hands to the left thigh or to your blocks or to the ground. Take two more breaths here. And from here, shift your left knee forward over your left ankle. Bring both hands to the inseam, uh, or rather, take your right hand off to the right side of your mat first. Left hand goes to your hip or up to the sky, so you're turning towards your bent leg. Stack your left shoulder over the right. Extend all the way up through your left fingertips. Another inhale. Exhale, release the left hand. Bring both hands to the inside of your left foot. You can wiggle your left foot off to the left a smidge more. You can stay here with the back knee on the ground or lift the back knee up for this runner's lunge. Reach equally through both legs. Draw the left hip back, right hip forward a smidge. Take another breath in. And open mouth, exhale. And then from here, however it makes sense, step your right foot forward and fold over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise to standing, sweep your arms overhead. Exhale, hands to the heart. Pause for a moment here. Take a moment to reflect on the warmth and light in your life that you can reflect outward, that you can reflect back to others. In other words, what are things that you're grateful for? What are things that make you smile? What are things that make you feel connected to others even in times where we may not be able to actually physically necessarily be with everyone that we'd like to be with?
And just like the moon, there's days where we feel full of that light and we're able to easily reflect it back. And then there's other days where we're not feeling so bright. We're feeling a little bit more um, introverted, a little bit more inward. But you're no, you're no less than when you're shining bright, right? The moon doesn't literally get bigger and then smaller. It's just the perspective in the way that it reflects light. You are whole no matter what, no matter how you're feeling. Take another big breath in here. Open mouth, exhale. Release your arms down by your sides. Inhale, extend your arms up overhead. Exhale, fold forward at the hips. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bend the knees, come all the way down to seated. I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to sit on this bench because I can't exactly sit with my legs bent, which is fine. So, so whether you are in a chair or on the ground, we'll do a few cool down poses here. So uh, if you're on the ground, or either way, take and stretch your left leg out long, bend your right knee, and then take your right knee out towards the right. Turn your torso towards the left leg. Bring your fingertips to your chair or towards the ground. Inhale, lengthen up through the crown of your head. Then exhale and walk your hands forward down the left leg to whatever is, whatever is reachable, whatever is sustainable for you. So you can send your breath into the back of the body. Part of the tradition of Halloween is the idea that the veil between the living and the dead is the thinnest at this time of the year. So we're able to connect with those who have passed, those who have come before us. So as we breathe into the back of the body in many traditions, it's said that that is the way that we can connect with our ancestors, connect with those who have come before us. So send your breath into the back of the body and perhaps calling to mind uh, an ancestor. And it might be someone that you are related to by blood, or it may be someone who has come before you that has helped make your life a little easier, or a little brighter, simply knowing that they existed. Let's take one more breath here. And take and walk your hands back up towards your hips, lift yourself up. You can stretch your right leg out, bend your left knee, take the left knee out to the side. If you're on the ground, the left knee may come all the way down to the earth. You could take it, bring a pillow or a blanket to the outside of the leg if you'd like as well. Bring your hands down by your hips, lengthen and lift up through your chest. And then walk your hands forward to whatever, again, is sustainable for your body. The idea with yoga is that we manufacture, manufacture just enough stress through our practice, that we can stay connected with it, that we can stay connected with our breath, stay present in our body, even when things become challenging. Again, send the breath into the back of the body. One more breath here. Walk your hands up towards your hips, lift yourself on up. Bring the soles of your feet to the ground so both knees are bent. Bring your hands by your hips or perhaps a little bit behind. Sway your knees from side to side. Then from here, let both knees rest off towards the right. Bring your right hand behind you, sweep your left arm up towards the sky. Big inhale here. Then exhale, left hand to the right thigh, turn to the right. Keep 
Keep lengthening up through the crown of your head. Try to line your ears up with your shoulders so that your chin draws back. And perhaps in doing that, you notice a lift in the heart. One more breath here. Turn to face the front of your space. Bring your hands to either side of your hips. Let the knees sway from side to side again. And rest the knees off to the left. Bring your left hands behind your left hip, or it can be a little further back as well. Sweep your right arm up to the sky. Big breath in through the right side here. And exhale, take the right hand to your left leg. Gently turn to the left. Again, keep lengthening up through the crown of your head. Draw your ears back so your chest is lifted so that there's uh, an extension, an elongation through your spine. The spine of yours, like all the other molecules in your body, made of carbon made of the stuff of stars. One more breath here. And turn to face the front of your space. Bring the soles of your feet to the ground with the knees sway from side to side. And from here, make your way onto your back. Once on your back, hug uh, your right knee in towards your chest. You can uh, stretch your left leg out long here as well. Take and bring your right knee towards your right shoulder, towards the right side of your torso. And then draw circles with your right knee. And take and draw circles with your right toes. Use your left hand to draw your right knee across your body <laughs> to the left. You can rest your right arm out to the side or up overhead or on your body. And breathe. Let's take three more breaths here. As you inhale, feel the body fill with breath. Feel how it expands out into the container of your skin. And as you exhale, notice the body resting on the ground. Let your next exhale be even more full than any other exhale you've done so far during this practice. And inhale to come onto your back once again. Stretch your right leg out to the ground. Bring your left knee into your chest. You can keep your right knee bent or stretch it out, by the way. Take your left knee towards the outside of your, the left side of your torso, so out to the same side first. Use your hand or hands to draw knees with your circle, or circles with your knees. And draw circles with your toes. Use your right hand to draw the left knee across your torso. You can rest your left arm out to the left or up overhead, whatever suits your body here. I think I have duct taped myself to my yoga mat. That's fine. Somebody will get me. Again, let's take three slow, deep breaths here.
Full exhale. Inhale, come onto your back. You can bring both feet to the ground with the knees bent. Let your knees sway from side to side or hug your knees into your chest. And from here, make your way into your final resting pose. Stretch your legs out long, rest your arms by your sides, or you can rest your hands on your belly. You can also, if there's any tenderness in your low back, bend your knees, place your feet mat distance apart, and let your knees rest against one another. Soften your gaze, meaning find one point in the space around you to direct your attention to, and then let your eyes close maybe 10%, maybe 30%, maybe halfway. Or if you'd like, you can close your eyes all the way. As you rest here in your final relaxation pose, take a few full deep intentional breaths. There's many beautiful, beautiful sayings within yogic traditions, as well as many other traditions, along the lines of that, you know, we are, we are not our body. We are something more than and greater than, connected to something larger than our own individual independent self. And that's true. At the same time, it's true that this is your body. This is your unique human experience that you get to have. It's like your soul gets to play Halloween and dress up every single day of your life. My friend Ram likes to say, likes to remind us that when we say, where are you, we point we point to our chest, we point to the center of our heart when we introduce ourselves and say, I'm L. We reside in there and that we're more than our body. We also have to take care of this body. We have to take care of one another. So here, rest with your breath, knowing that in this place of rest, you're taking care of yourself. You're making it possible to show up to take care of others. I'll bring you back in just a few moments. As you rest here in this place of practice of stillness, nestled into the earth, take a moment to reflect on what, a, what an incredible coincidence it is, a miraculous opportunity for life is.
all of the things that had to go in the way that they went in order for you to be here in this wild and crazy time. Think of everything that had to happen as it did in order to be in relationship with the people in relationship with. To be connected to the people that you love. The fact that you're here is a rad radical affirmation that you deserve. Send little flickers of movement into your fingers and your toes. Bend your knees, place the soles of your feet onto the earth. And take your time to roll onto either side and pause for a moment there. This is the space in between, between the end of your practice and the, the rest of your night. perfect opportunity to decide what you want to leave behind and what you want to take with you. Whether from this practice or from the week or from the year. And press yourself on up to seated. Reminding yourself that every breath is an opportunity to begin a meal. As you find yourself up to seated, bring your hands to heart center with palms pressing, or you can stack your hands over the surface of your heart. And I'll leave you with one of my favorite teachings that I've had shared with me through the practice of yoga over the years, which is the, the three truths that I am something like you, I'm nothing like you, and I'm nothing but you. Bow your chin to your chest, honoring that we're all connected and we're all unique and we're all the same. Thank you so much for taking the time to practice with, uh, with me tonight and my cosmic goatee that is just, it's just here, it's just there. Um, Again, my name's Elle. A big thank you to Will at the St. Louis Science Center Planetarium for, uh, for this, our second round of virtual yoga under the stars. Um, as I mentioned, we're offering this for free on our online platforms, and we hope that you will consider making a contribution if you're able. You can donate at yogabuzz.org, um, or you can make a donation to the St. Louis Science Center. Um, we also have some really cool merch on the old, the old Yoga Buzz site if you want to check that out. And um, our applications are open for our 200-hour yoga teacher training program in 2021. We're doing three semesters of teacher training, so there's three different cohorts that you can apply for. Uh, it'll all be online, which will be really, really cool. And, um, and then for those of you who have done 200-hour teacher training and are, have been waiting for a 300-hour, I'll say this is it is coming. So... Thank you all so much for being here tonight. Thank you for um, giving me an opportunity to get dressed up. Um, this duct tape, you should always like flex before you put the duct tape on around your body, just in case you were wondering. Um, definitely recommend that, that's not what I did tonight. Uh, so anyway, have a wonderful ha uh, Halloween. Be safe, take care of one another, and take care of yourselves. Make sure you vote if you haven't already, and uh, talk to you soon. Thank you.